I'd like you to imagine for a moment that it's your birthday, and I baked you a one-of-a-kind cake which you really loved. However, when you asked me for the recipe, instead of giving it to you accurately, I gave you the wrong one. Let's say I intentionally messed up the ingredients, wrote it in confusing language, or gave you vague directions along the way so you wouldn't be able to recreate my cake. This is the essence of obfuscation, and we're going to come back to this word in a sec. Obfuscation stems from an interesting trait of technology, which is that technology can often be reversed and broken down into its individual parts. People can and always will try to reverse engineer technology out of curiosity to understand how it works or to mess with it to make it work in unintended ways. People might have sinister reasons too, like looking for security holes or even stealing your technology altogether. Like I mentioned, in the software world, obfuscation is when you intentionally make finished code look confusing. The code still works exactly the same functionally, it just looks wildly different to people, trying to reverse engineer it later on. This brings us to now. In a previous video, I showed how OpenAI's GPT-3 was capable of writing functional computer code. Since we already know this, I wondered if GPT-3 could take it a step further by writing functional and on top of that intentionally misleading or obfuscated code. Today, I'm going to be sharing what I found out. I started by finding a great source of simple Python code. Next, by giving a definition of obfuscation and some sample code, I tried outright to get GPT-3 to obfuscate some code for me to see if it would work right out of the box. Here's what it gave me. It just didn't touch the code at all, but instead just told me more about obfuscation and the different techniques and tools available. I think it's safe to mark this attempt as a fail. At the time, I was ready to give up on this obfuscation idea altogether, thinking GPT-3 can't do it. But I realized, maybe I could have it implement a few of the methods people might use to disguise their code and break it down into smaller steps, rather than do an entire obfuscation all at once. So, I tried to get GPT-3 to rename variable names in a Python program, from human-readable friendly ones to intentionally confusing ones. I gave it two training examples in a test program which simply updated a counter up to the value of 5 and GPT-3 pulled it off. On the left you'll see the input program I gave GPT-3 and on the right you'll see the output it gave back to me. C00R0 underscore looks pretty confusing as a variable name to me, but then again, I'm just a simple human. Next, I tried to get it to rename some function names in confusing ways too, so people reverse engineering can't even figure out what each function does. Here's what it came up with. Notice on the right, it not only renamed the function, but remembered to update its function call later on in the main program too. Nice work, GP3. Very nice. Finally, I wondered if I could get it to remove comments in the code to further confuse any future malicious reverse engineers trying to steal my technology. Coders often leave comments in their computer code to explain to each other how a computer program even works. This took a lot of tweaking to get GPT-3 to do, but eventually it was able to do that too. At this point, my code made even less sense to me than it did before. In part 3 of this video, I'm going to be showing you one complete Python program GPT-3 obfuscated, which included removing comments, renaming functions, and renaming variables all at once. But first, I've been lying and feel like I really should be upfront with you. In my last video, I confessed using GPT-3 to generate my own tweets and suffered from an identity crisis as a result. Just from today's video alone, I actually have numerous confessions. The first of which is, I really had to cherry pick the example outputs you're seeing. In the previous examples you saw, you witnessed just one of many attempts GPT-3 had, which is something I don't normally do on this channel. Although it's impressive GPT-3 can do any of these tasks at all, even a single time, I don't think it's quite ready to obfuscate code in a production setting. Second, I recommend using actual commercial obfuscation tools like PyArmor because they use more heavy obfuscation techniques and are far more reliable. One interesting thing I notice is that GPT-3 won't actually make typos, but might rewrite even the functionality or architecture of the code altogether while trying to obfuscate it. This is a huge no-no in real production code environments, but also kind of funny. And finally, just for the sake of incoming comments I will likely read below, here are some more caveats for you to fulfill your inner desire to correct me with technicalities. <laughs> with that out of the way, I was excited to obfuscate a Python program with GPT-3 entirely. 
To test this, I gave GPT-3 a final simple program which had two functions for addition and calculating radius. Remember, in this final test, GPT-3 had to apply all three obfuscation methods we learned so far into a single program. It had to rename variables to confusing ones, rename functions as well to confuse, and remove all inline and block code comments. In just a moment, I'm going to be sharing the final, complete output it gave me. However, before I do that, I'm going to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Every subscription goes a long way and means a lot to me. Thank you. Anyways, here's the final code it came up with. As you can see on the right, our code is a lot more confusing now. GPT-3 successfully completed all three steps to obfuscate our program. We have proven that GPT-3 can not only write functional computer code, but can take it a step further and make it obfuscated too. This is good news, because we are now misleading people trying to reverse engineer our code later on. To be fair, it appears GPT-3 did mess up some of the spacing, and could still do more advanced stuff in the future to obfuscate better. But as a proof of concept, I was pleased that GPT-3 was able to obfuscate my code after all. And there you have it, that's GPT-3 code obfuscation. If you're interested in seeing the full code that I used to get GPT-3 to work in everything, full transparency, I've open sourced my code and complete techniques at the link below. Just a quick reminder, I'm still ranting heavily and embarrassing myself on Twitter, and also publishing regularly on my very thoughtful Substack newsletter, so make sure you check it out. That's all for now. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that I know you learned something or were at least entertained today. Thanks for watching!